Welcome to the MVP show. Full show notes for this episode can be found at nz365guy.com forward slash 259. Before we chat with today's guest, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. It's amazing what can change in 90 days. Just look at the effects of COVID-19 since March. This year, I had the pleasure of mentoring 100 people in the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. If you want to be mentored in the next 90 Day Challenge, please go to nz365guide.com forward slash mentor. Today's MVP is from New South Wales, Australia. He's a founder of 365 Mechanics PTY Limited. He's a first time MVP coming up one year now. He's a lover of sports and his website is bruce365.com and also you can find him on Twitter at 365Bruce. Bruce Silito, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mark. It's actually Bruce Sitole. And um, yeah, the pleasure is all mine to be on your show finally. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry for that, that uh, not pronouncing it exactly right. I'm glad you've had the opportunity to make sure that the guests know exactly who you are. But New South Wales, how's it going there at the moment? It's going great. I mean, this week particularly, it's been the weather's all um, blue and the sun is shining. So it's kind of lifting morale for everyone after a gloomy few months with everything that's going on. So it's awesome. So I uh, I just hear with the COVID side of things that you guys might be heading into a, a bit of a, 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 I wouldn't say a Melbourne situation, which has been quite bad there, but I hear that is the numbers increasing or something, you know, in, in New South Wales? In New South Wales, it's eerily a little bit stable. It's almost like, <laughs> why is this stable yet Melbourne is kind of falling apart? But um, I think we're humming at about the maybe 10-ish cases, new cases per day, um, which is still manageable, but... um. Fingers crossed that uh, these next few weeks we can uh, kind of batten it down and uh, get those numbers right down to zero. Mm, mm, mm. So true, so true. I've known you for some many years now, and just going back off my memory, I think you have worked in New Zealand. You have, uh, I mean, I know that one of the companies I was working with worked with a company you're working for in Australia. What's been your journey from you know across the globe, so to speak, where did you start kind of in in your bizaps career and and how have you ended up where you are? Okay, so how much time do we have? Um, <laughs> i I'm originally from Zimbabwe. Um, I grew up and I did my uni in South Africa in Cape Town, and I did a honors degree in computer science and i t. And upon graduating, I moved to New Zealand in Auckland, and I was doing a business management diploma. And a Microsoft partner, coincidentally, then offered um, kind of like internships from this um, particular uh, um, academy I was attending. And it happened to be in business, uh, well, Dynamics CRM as it was back then. So that's how I um, fell into it. So I had an internship there. Things went great both ways and they proceeded to offer me a job, a permanent job. So was that Intergen at the time? Uh, that was business mechanics. So um, it was business. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, do you know, I, I, I every now and again, I, in going into Auckland, I see that building, the signage is still up on it, but I don't know that business mechanics is still there or in business. I, I've, I've not heard of them for many, many years. Yeah, I think they've diversified a little bit and not, they used to be obviously purely kind of dynamic CRM. I think they may be doing more IT and manage, you know, like infrastructure bits but um yeah so i was obviously um very grateful to lindell and wayne stewart for giving me that first opportunity and that's how i fell into the microsoft business applications i was looking for a job and they were you know and they just did dynamics um so yeah that started off there in a technical capacity as a technical consultant went through and started um doing more kind of functional consulting and then leading up into a bit of architecture and that's when I moved to um, OA Systems and started learning from uh, people like Regan Murphy and a few other experienced um, guns out there. And then um, moved to Sydney, Australia in 2012, about, uh, working at another partner. Uh, and at the time, eSavvy, who since got bought out by, was it? 
Dang old bought out by Empire, I think it was. Yeah. Was it was Empire second or did they first get bought out by Oakton? Was it no not OBS? Oakton. Um, or like, yeah, OB, there was yeah, like, yeah, OBS, there's, there's OBS. All, kind yeah. of all those during all that times. Um but then so obviously after that I went client side to a company um in the financial services industry, Flexi Group. And that's where you and I interacted a lot more there. Um so there was obviously your time in New Zealand too, but then you also moved across to Sydney and um, was client side, which was uh, actually great. Like it was fantastic learning because it's a uh, relatively big company. And what I found useful there was that working at a partner side, you're usually just all Microsoft, all Microsoft. And you, as a consultant, you usually see things when the deal's almost basically signed. Whilst on the client side, um, it was, you know, you're getting to discussions where like, why should we use Dynamics? Why not Salesforce? You know, so understanding how key decisions are made or what things influence um, those types of decisions. That was um, great learning at, 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 at Flexi there. And then moved on again to another consulting firm before um, having, I've always had the curiosity and the keenness on myself to start something on my own. And um, about 15 or 18 months ago, no, 15 months ago, uh, that's when I founded 365 Mechanics. Wow. That, man, that's, what a, what a brilliant journey. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's um interesting reflecting, just kind of seeing some of those key points or that, you know, led you down a certain path without knowing. Yeah. Yeah, so true, so true. As in, one of the questions I get a lot from people that have worked partner side for, you know, five plus years and they're like, what's next, you know, is it just go work for another partner or, you know, and there's been a lot of consultants that have moved around the partners, you know, in, in their geography that they live in if they haven't traveled. And and I always suggest that you go and do a customer side because, it, you know, where you're you're the internal person that's working on the the biz app project and you might be the, the, you know, the, the technology, um, the technology owner, for example, within a company, what, what was your big, you, you highlighted a few things about understanding why decisions are made. What else was kind of key differences that you see and, and particularly helping round out your skills as a consultant between working partner side and then working directly, uh, at a, a customer? So another key learning, um, which, you know, is kind of embedded in me now is around user adoption or getting um, increasing usage of the solutions you deploy. So typically, and this is kind of just a generalization is, you know, with partners kind of, you know, deploy a solution, you know, the project kind of completes and it's kind of goodbye or, you know, sign up to another, you know, kind of engagement whilst um, then the businesses usually need continuous enhancements. Um, but what I learned there is um, the tip, um, the, sin the scenario usually is that all um, management usually want every single salesperson to add all their activities and salespeople hate <laughs> CRMs usually. So what I was actually tasked, and this was back in the um, days too, when we had the Outlook client, which um, was notorious for like deleting appointments and Hog crashing people's computers and so forth. I actually got, um, I went out on site with one of the sales reps and they showed me a day in their life basically and said, look, let's use CRM together and they show you how kind of tedious and difficult it is um, in their specific scenario. Cause you could be in there, you know, in the, in the comfort of your office chair saying, yep, I've got this big screen and I can do this, you know, just add all these 20 required fields. But when you're actually out on the road and seeing how they actually operate and how fluid some of their conversations are, um, that was kind of a real good learning and understanding on um, what to kind of focus on. So always wanted to get input from the actual end users. Yeah, management and the stakeholder buy-in is good, but, you know, it's about the people who will be actually using it who, who um, you need to get that buy-in to from. Yeah. What about from, you know, as an in your role, uh, and I'll, I'll give you an example that I've heard quite a few times, particularly when I was working in the UK, was this, is that um, I remember talking to one individual just popping to mind and he was saying he was working customer side and he had a lot of partners pursue him to go and work for them because he's, he's created quite a reputation for himself, even though he's worked customer side he, in the community. He's made this reputation. And so he was being headhunted by various partners. 
And he just couldn't see the attraction of working for a partner over working for the end customer. Now, in your experience, because you've sat on both, what is the attraction to working for a partner? And then what's the attraction to working for the end customer where you're just, you know, you only have one project as such. It might be broken into lots of sub-projects, but you've just got, you know, the, your 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 clients are the other, your other staff or colleagues within the business. Okay. So on the partner side, the attraction would be the diversification. So you could potentially be uh, working on multiple um, projects, different types of technologies, exposure. Um, you're probably a lot closer uh, with um, aligned with Microsoft and, you know, getting early access to certain new things and more support that way. Um, so that's what pro. So I'll just give a quick con or what I saw is sometimes uh, the downside is that you could be stuck on a five-year project and it's only doing with, you know, a certain part of the product and they, you just need to, you know, they need people who are billable or go down that side and that's kind of it. So, you know, you can't have, um, you don't get the exposure to the other bits and pieces. On the customer side or um, client side, the attraction there, I guess, is you round out more of um, your business side too, or your business acumen. So learning how to deal with exposure to C-level types of audiences potentially and how you kind of get more ownership of the outcomes too. So you're literally like you're responsible. So if it's anything, you know, whatever technology you, you may be managing, it, it's you. So it is, um, it can be more empowering that way and um, not necessarily to as um, intense sometimes with some, we're with, let's say with things like go lives or late nights and so forth. So it, it's, the, it's about that balance and what you want to as a particular individual, if you want to be more technical, more business, bit of both and yeah, balancing that out. I like it. I like it. It's, it's, it's definitely different. And uh, I think they, they offer different skills to run out one's career. Now, in starting your own business, you know, you're, you're 15 months into your own um, company, which I think is absolutely fantastic, you know, that you've gone on this, you've been a consultant for many years, you've worked client, you've worked partner, and now you've started your own. What are you doing differently from running your partner business based on the learnings and, uh, you know, that you had from your other uh, partnership experiences, even, you know, in customers, but what's, what are you doing differently? And the other question that I'll follow that with is what are you doing the same? In other words, what did you see work really well in the companies that you've worked for in the past that you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do that in my business as well, because it works. So on the different part, so what I'm purposely avoiding is in terms of, I guess, um, treating people a lot differently or how I'd like to be treated. So when it comes to things like um, onboarding people or talking about, you know, certain expectations. So um, it's sometimes it's easy to fall into the same, I guess, almost trap or thinkings as other, because <laughs> that's the easiest and also what we know. But then I always, I always try to reflect on how I felt when we those things were done, be it, you know, things like having um, things beyond your control. Let's say someone had to be, I don't know, billable 80% of the time or, um, you know, going on site for forever in a day or five days a week, you know, without any kind of time to learn or um, improve their own skill set. So those are some of the things where I'm, we're trying to do differently internally for the team. Um, then also focusing on our customer relationships. So um, trying... Uh, to be the kind of trusted advisors rather than just partners come in and go. So kind of work together rather than, you know, use us, then go away type thing. So that's where we're looking um, kind of diff to get a lot closer on that relationship side. So which is manageable right now, whilst we're relatively small in size, it's um, interesting when, uh, how we can scale that up as we kind of grow along. Um, things that, that, uh, we're kind of piggybacking, which we've seen done well, is um, just using some of the social media, particularly LinkedIn, and for just awareness and getting, um, you know, your voice out there, even if it's just simply not necessarily just for any kind of lead generation, just more for awareness and showing our capabilities and also working closely with um, Microsoft, be it both in the technology um, specialists and also the business side too. So um, that's working really well too. Mm -hmm. 
How do you balance that, you know, as, as an as an owner of a business, those key stakeholder relationships, whether it be with Microsoft or um, maybe other even Microsoft partners that are not in competing spaces to you? Let's say they're a, you know, uh, an infrastructure or an Azure person and they have a, they might have a customer that's into biz apps. How do you make sure that you don't get bogged down in the day-to-day of your business and 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 lose sight of if you like focusing on building the business or the company or the organization that you've created so it's a continuous uh, challenge um that you know goes up and down in terms of getting it right but um what i'm learning to do and looking to improve on is empowering and delegating to um, our team members so that you know something i can completely have trust in them, which I do with a lot of things now where they can say, you run this or you kind of um, get exposure to this and then work on the, on those other bits of the, of the business, which are just as important. So it, it's a fine balance and it uh, it's sometimes, you know, it, it's not easy to balance it. Yeah, no, I understand. Tell me about your journey to becoming an MVP. How did it come about? How did you get nominated? How did you, you know... Um, get into the position that you obviously somebody nominated you and got you into the program but what's that journey for you been like so it was at that um when i was on 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 um client side or customer side where i was having these challenges with the sales team having this adoption of um dynamics crm whereby you know typically what happens is an exec comes in and says okay this doesn't work we're just going to put in salesforce so we, I, I was working on everything tried to optimize the Outlook client, went to the Microsoft um, Dynamics Outlook app. It wasn't quite work, like the, it wasn't, the traction wasn't there. And I remember that's when Canvas Power Apps came out. They came out like on a Monday and by Wednesday, I had done a proof of concept with and, and deployed it to one of the key um, sales users. And usually when this person responds, you know, it's always like emails, you're going to have to sit and have a cup of coffee. But um, I got this email back, which kind of shocked me. And it was like, you know, we love this. or I love this. It says, this is what we've been work- waiting for, for like the last three years, you know, um, even things like it is those saying that it's better than CRM. And for me, I was like, all this was, was just, a, you know, a tailored interface on top of dynamics. Right. So then that's when I was like, I can't. I just, my brain was like, how many other customers or, you know, deployments are like this where people are just suffering with, you know, the the standard kind of CRM forms. And hence I started blogging about, you know, Canvas apps primarily and talking about how you can use them to kind of better, you know, to play alongside with Dynamics and started doing a few more presentations. And then um, I think it was um, initially Leon Tribe nominated me and, um, and I was like, I was grateful. And I actually didn't get accepted the first time. Um, and, but it wasn't about that for me. I, I, you know, the, it, it kind of, I was more, su- like I carried on doing what I was doing because I was like, I believe in this. And I just wanted a lot of more people to be aware of this to kind of save um, dynamics. And then um, and one of the Microsoft um, SMEs when the Power App Space then um, nominated me and then, yeah, then um, I got approved. I think it was in October last year, October 2019, yeah. What's been the impact on your career? Impact on career, it's been great in the sense that, um, you know, with the kind of the kudos that comes with being an MVP, um, even though there's some misconceptions that we kind of know <laughs> everything and we should have everything. But um, again, I, I probably haven't... Um, it's good to, I haven't really been throwing it out there as much per se, but um, yeah, even working closely now with Microsoft. So sometimes there are some upsides too, whereby they need help with some MVPs because they haven't got the local kind of team. And then even for us as a business, some of those engagements just coincidentally turn into kind of uh, a paid engagement later on down the track. So, um, but also what I really enjoy is just the access to the other MVPs across um across the globe unfortunately we didn't have summit this year but i was really looking forward to meeting all these people who have been kind of you know looking up to you for you know in my dynamics and a career so um but that's really cool like that's what i even tell people that you know we can sometimes you know post questions within our community you know go to bed and then wake up and there's like you know (laughs) 
10 awesome answers from people exactly. who've got this vast experience with mm, this mm, platform. Mm, mm. So um, being able to tap into that too is um, it's just fantastic. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. Well, it's uh, we've already consumed our time, so we're going to jump on to some quick choir questions. Um, but uh, I didn't realize you came from Zimbabwe. My my best friend growing up was from Zimbabwe. He's also my cousin. And uh, both my cousins were born there because my uncle was a school teacher and um, after doing his degree, went to Zimbabwe and fell in love with the Zimbabwe lady and got married. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So I, as an, I had no idea that that's where you specifically originated from. So, yeah. I'm learning something. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay. You ready for your quick fire? Okay. Hit me. First of all, would you rather be the funniest or the smartest person in the room? Funniest. Okay. What's, what's the first music you ever bought? I think it was like those now hits 23. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the <laughs> CDs, right? Yeah, CDs, yeah. <laughs> if you could get away with a crime, what would it be? Hmm. Get away with a crime, what would it be? Uh, finding a cure for like diabetes or something. <laughs> Stealing oh. the cure for diabetes. Uh, stealing. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. What's your favorite family tradition? Favorite family tradition? Eating dinner at the table. Nice. I like it. Would you? What would your rap name be? Ooh, rap name. <laughs> uh, B dog. B dog. I like it. I like it. What's something you are certain you'll never experience, and why? Loving eating coriander. I just don't enjoy <laughs> the taste of coriander. <laughs> hey, Bruce. Thanks for coming on the show. Mark, it's been totally awesome. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. Please like and subscribe and review in your favorite podcast app. See you next time.